Commissioner's Week continues here on Midwest Sportsnet, and it is a privilege to be joined today by Nick Rule, who is the fairly newly installed commissioner for the Heart of America Conference. I say that uh, it's four months in. I, I know Lori Thomas was there for about a decade, so uh, relatively new to the job. However, not new to the Heart of America Conference. Uh, let me ask you then, uh, Commissioner, how did this role come about for you? Yeah, it, it was kind of crazy. I mean, I, I'd served on a lot of our leadership committees within the heart as an athletic director, and, and I got to know Lori really well. And, you know, for the last you know, few years, especially during COVID, you know, we had so much commonality in how we wanted to handle our business within the conference. And so, you know, she kind of took me under her wing. And um, But we didn't, I thought maybe at some point the commissioner's role might come out maybe four or five years uh, in the future. And and then obviously with her opportunity with KC Pro Volleyball coming up and that amazing opportunity, it just kind of came out of nowhere. Um, so initially, you know, I was involved in a lot of leadership. I was our athletic director association president, uh, uh, chair for our conference and vice president for the NAI. And 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 so I just kind of got used to, to advocating for the heart and, and thinking big picture. But wasn't necessarily, didn't necessarily see that coming. And so initially I I didn't apply, but I was encouraged um, by others and, and, and some on the search committee and, but then kind of felt in my heart that it was the right thing to do. Um, I like to be a big picture leader and, and, and and make an impact on a lot of different people. And, um, and these jobs don't come up very often. So uh, I've enjoyed it. Um, I started February 1st on January 31st. It was the toilet paper game at William Penn. And on February 1, uh, I started there. So January 31st was my last day at William Penn. And and it's just been awesome. I love our coaches. I love our presidents in this conference. I love this conference. So uh, it's been a great transition. And and I'm 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 feeling great right now. It's uh, I'm on cloud nine. Most recently, the athletic director, as you mentioned at William Penn, that's where I saw your name for the first time and uh, followed the statesman for a number of years. I appreciate your work there. Talk about seven years there in Oskaloosa. Yeah, you know, gosh, I, I started coaching in 2010 at William Penn, and I was a you know, student athlete before then. And, um, you know, it, it was – William Penn gave me a shot, right? Um, you know, I, I didn't know what I was as a leader until I showed up on that campus. And so, you know, I'm grateful for the opportunities there. And, and frankly, President Otteson at William Penn um, took a chance on, you know, a 29-year-old, uh, you know, golf coach who wanted to be an ad one day and i worked in the development office and fundraising so i had a little bit of that type of experience and took a chance and um it i I had a great seven years there um you know we went from sometimes barely cracking the top 100 in the learfield to you know being a you know perennial top 40 you know program or athletic department and made a lot of changes culture changes and um and it was a great time and great learning um and, and just being around people and managing people and, and, and trying to be that big picture transformational leader. And, um, yeah, I look back on it. Part of the reason why I made the transition over the heart is that I, I felt good about where we were at and where we took it. And, um, and, and they have a great team in place there to keep uh, continuing things on. So it, it was a great experience. Um, one I'll remember the rest of my life and, and prepared me for this opportunity to, to be a big picture leader with the, with the heart of America. I've wanted to ask, and uh, I'll ask you maybe a couple more about the idea, quote unquote, day in the life of. And so let, let me uh, present then crossover season. I know there are a couple of crossover seasons each ac- academic and athletic year. So let's just uh, say right in the middle of the conference basketball tournaments that are going on. Of course, there's so much else, baseball, softball, numerous other sports right there at the first part of March. What's a day in the life of like for a conference commissioner? Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, I I think when I was in the AD space, I looked over on the commissioner's side and I was just, okay, like I asked the same question, what's a day in the life? Um, You know, working on a campus uh, with a campus with 27 sports and all that, um, your life is crazy. Uh, and, And can be very reactional. Um, and so one of the things I've learned about this is that a commissioner builds their schedule, whereas an AD has their schedule built for them. So um, the transition to crossover season, as far as the craziness of it, honestly, didn't, it didn't really phase me um, because I'm used to it. Um, and I'm used to it on regular season, postseason, and all that. And so um, it was actually uh, felt slower to me. Um, and I was able to look, be a little bit more intentional um, with my communication and efforts and just like what Tyler and I are trying to do within the conference office. And so, 
uh, it didn't feel overwhelming. It, it actually felt like, okay, we're doing good work here, um, but he, but we were able to assess. And what we've gone through a lot within the conference is assessing where we're at, where we want to be, kind of like what we did at William Penn, where we're at, where we want to be. And, and we, we're in a really good place. Lori Thomas left this uh, conference in an incredible place. So we can think very you know, broad on how we can uh, in, impact our student athlete experience. So you know, there's travel and things like that, but uh, it's different than an AD, but, but I, I have a little bit more ownership of it and we have a little bit more ownership of what we do in the conference office. And so um, I just think you can be a lot more intentional and deliberate with, with what you're trying to, to, to serve for membership. And so um, it hasn't been that crazy. It's just kind of felt normal in a sense. <laughs> What what's what is from your perspective this this relatively new into the position? What's your biggest challenge as a conference commissioner? You know, we talk about you hear so much in the news and the in the Power Five space and all that about just the changing dynamics in college athletics. And I've said this all the way back when I was a coach. When Division One has this conference consolidation or whatnot it trickles down to division two nai you just don't read about it in the news and such and so um the heart of america is a is a is benefiting from that right we're expanding um we have associate member expansion um so i think right now um the challenge that we have in the heart uh is probably en very enviable to very uh, so many others is that we're growing and we're trying to figure out how to make that all work right at a large conference um, and I'm grateful for that. I don't look at that challenge as a challenge of any type of negativity. I look at it as a challenge of opportunity and something that we can, can be transformational and, and great. Um, but it is challenging, right? Like we're going to have some really big conversations at our heart summit uh, with all of our coaching bodies and, and their leadership groups about, okay, what does a division structure look like? So th there's a lot of evolution going on in, in our conference. And I think anytime that you're evolving quickly, um, if you don't clearly communicate out what you're trying to achieve, it can very easily be looked at revolution and, and, and we're not revolting here. We're evolving. Um, it's evolution, not revolution. And so I think change is kind of makes sometimes people uncomfortable. And so I think I've got to be very deliberate. We've got to be very deliberate in the conference office about <clears throat> enhancing our business practices, um, enhancing our operation and enhancing what we deliver to membership. And so Anytime there's a lack of communication, negativity fills in. So we just have to be very intentional about communicating and over communicating as we go through this uh, period of growth. I understand. I, I want to look back just a little bit here since we're talking Heart of America Conference, by the way, here on Midwest Sportsnet. I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel. We enjoy talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Visiting now with Nick Rule, the current conference commissioner of the Heart of America Conference. And I, I want to look back just a little bit to the to previous commissioner and Lori Thomas. You've mentioned her name a couple of times. She did a fantastic job. And and I, there's the heart will always have a special place in in my mind, in my heart, if you will. Uh, because of some, uh, some decision, a decision that was made back in 2020. We all know what happened in 2020 with COVID and, and all that was going on. Now, I will say up front, I'm on record as to how I felt about some of the issues that were happening in our country and in athletics at the time. So it's no secret. Go back, look at the channel. You can hear what I had to say at the time. But I appreciated the Heart of America Conference in late summer early fall of 2020, I don't recall the exact date, when, when the Heart of America said, we're going to play football. We're going to play football this fall. We're going to come out and we're going to compete and we're not going to let a lot of other things stand in the way. And I appreciated that. And because of, uh, of that decision, and there were a couple, you know, maybe a division one or two and a couple more that, that were right there, but the heart was at the forefront. And that will always, uh, you know, stand out to me and be in my mind. Can you talk about that just a little bit? You, you may have had a part to play. Absolutely. Um, you know, I was on our COVID task force. I was one of a few ADs that was serving on that task force with a few presidents and athletic trainers and, um, and, and Commissioner Thomas. And, um, you know, I, I remember hearing what you were saying. <clears throat> and uh, you were right. Um, and I think the heart of America was right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that was actually the time you asked a question earlier. That was actually the time where I started to figure out, okay, I thought maybe I wanted to be an AD the rest of my life. That moment, COVID was the time where I felt like, okay, I want to be a commissioner one day. And, and it was Lori's leadership through that time. Um, you know, it was a bold approach. Uh, people criticized it. Um, but I think, you know, and so much when, when everyone's telling you to do one thing and it doesn't necessarily make sense in your heart, um, what does that look like? Uh, you know, think twice and act once. And, and, and we had 
the great thing about what I love about the heart of America, we had presidents, we had ADs, we had coaches, but this is a, this is a president run league with ADs that are a big part of, of, of that discussion as well. And we all wanted to figure out how do we open back up, right? How do we open back up for play? You know, William Penn, we were there uh, two days after everything was canceled. We were in our, we're in our conference room saying, how do we get back open to provide an experience for student athletes? And we were so proud to be a part of a conference that was doing the same thing, having the same conversations at the same time. And I think it was bold at that time. And, and it was risky. And, and we did it. And it was absolutely the right decision. Now we get to look back at things and being on a campus recently, I get to see the imp- I got to see the impact of states that closed on those students that were in high school and states that stayed open. And I can't give you, you know, deep details on what, but I'm telling you there was a difference. Yeah. There was a difference on students um, and just their mental health and their academic growth. Um, and frankly, just, you know, their athletic prowess um, for those that were part of states that found a way to provide some type of experience and, and those states that, that, that closed that opportunity. We were a conference that did that. And frankly, if you look at the environment in higher education, just from a fiscal standpoint, in a sense, um, you cl- you don't open up that fall or you don't allow for your members to make that decision to open up. Our membership may not look the same today. <laughs> um, and, and that's important. And uh, we have strong membership um, that are moving in the right direction in an environment that is scary. Um, and I think a lot of that goes back to that decision that was led by um, Lori Thomas and our COP Council of Presidents and our COVID task force. I think that decision set the parameters for us to take that next step of the conference from being, you know, one of the best to what I think, you know, one of maybe the two or three best um, today, as opposed to maybe being one of the six or seven best. And, and I think because of that decision, we're still moving forward um, and, and in the future and our goal is to be the best. Well, I, I just want to take the time to publicly commend you as a conference and, and the decisions that were made. I agree with the way you said it. You absolutely were right. And I, I think that our country uh, benefited from that. And I don't think that's a, an, an overstatement at all. But anyway, speaking of football, then let's talk about football for a little bit because we have a lot of previews here on Midwest mm-hmm. Sports talking to a number of uh, Division II and, and especially a whole lot of NAIA football coaches. We've had heart co- coaches on. We'll have some more on coming up. And you all are, are, for 2024, the largest football conference in the NAIA. Now, I know that's going to shift and change and uh, conference realignment happens, and, and it's not just at the Division I level, but uh, 14 football schools. And it's, you know, we'll talk about some other members here in just a moment, but that's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, we have a growth strategy and a growth plan that um, this is a, con- you know, from Lori's time to my time, um, there were so many of us uh, involved in our strategic plan and such. And so it was such a great transition between the two of us because we really knew what we were trying to do and trying to achieve and growth was a part of that. So, you know, having, you know, St. Ambrose and William Woods and Missouri Baptist, you know, coming over and into the conference as affiliate members. Uh, within football was important to us. And obviously with Missouri Baptist and William Woods becoming full members, not this coming year, but next year. I mean, that growth was important, part of our growth strategy, Um, just not in football, but in just general across the board. But if you look at it, I mean, I think we're attractive right now because, you know, we want to make a big time where we're at. And that's, that's kind of our mantra right now within our conference is like, how do we make a big time where we're at? And we, we had that same mantra when we were on a campus is just, you know, we want our student athletes to feel like this is important. This, they're, what they're doing is big time. Even, you know, and, and, and I think that we have the ability with our location, our membership to provide a really high level experience. And, and I look at football this year. Holy cow. I mean, we, you know, we've got high level teams that you always see like Grandview and Benedictine and Baker and such. Right. And then you've got the rise of these teams that maybe um, had it been as good in the past, whether it's new coaches or, or just continuing to get better. I mean, it's good. It is going to be really fun to watch this fall. Um, I mean, obviously, Grandview's the front runner, right? They, they've just been so good. Um, but I just, I think you just see overall this gap is getting smaller and smaller um, from the bottom to the top, and 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 that's that's great for the sport, that's great for the conference, and that's great for our student athletes to have some high level competition. So I can't wait to watch and see what happens this fall. 
Yeah, well, you, you have to mention Grandview, at least until they actually lose a conference game at some point in time. So yep. that's uh, that's definite. And Boudoir Sports Saturday, we'll, uh, we're looking to be at, at a couple of, of Hart Conference sites this fall as well for our, our Saturday show. So uh, I'm excited to, to get to be into the, the conference footprint just a little bit. We well, touched on and, it. And I, and I know we have a few schools that are trying to be the first game in college football, period. I, I know William Penn and William yes. Woods have a Thursday game, and, and I think Missouri Valley's working on one too, and I'm not sure if they've got that figured out. But, you know, it, it's, football is going to be fun this fall. Yeah, we're going to be we will be talking about football. Well, obviously, all summer long, but uh, I, in the uh, not just August thirty first, uh, way back earlier than that too. You're right. So we definitely we want to highlight those schools. It should be a lot of fun. We've actually had a chance to visit with both coaches from William Woods and from William Penn already here on the channel. But uh, you all have not just it's not just the fourteen football schools. Thirteen members, full members right now. Uh, you mentioned two more coming on with William Woods and uh, Missouri Baptist coming in in the 25-26 year. Uh, talk about that. But And you have associate members as well. I mean, the conference continues to grow. Yeah, I mean, it, it was so important. Um, you know, Missouri Baptist and William Woods just makes sense. Uh, you know, William Woods, from a geographic standpoint and what they're trying to, trying to do, they have a new AD there, Steve Wilson, who who really fits the mentality of the type of administrator that that we see developing in the heart um and they have a great president uh, that that just has that forward thinking you know missouri baptist they had already been in for uh, you know men's volleyball and and had joined for football and frankly you know you know, we, we have them we're in des moines we're in kansas city we're in all those little towns in between and and then you're working cedar rapids and it just kind of draws to st louis so we've got this just this demographic this area that, that really like we want to get in the st louis area um and missouri baptist is a great fit you know the other thing with those two is that you know they don't necessarily have to have different sports in in different conferences for affiliate membership i mean we have we have 27 championship sports um and uh and so they could find a home for for everyone really almost everyone um of their sports and so we're excited about them they've already they've already been included in our planning meetings for you know, that next year as we grow and um and then our you know affiliate associate memberships you know i don't know why this is necessarily happening um but but it's happening in a sense um we knew that we wanted to consolidate lacrosse uh you know this there was just the kcac and the heart just had this you know they had a few teams the heart had a few teams it was just it wasn't necessarily the greatest experience for student athletes so you know, Ted Bridenthal and I talked just at the start, just like, hey, okay, let's let's make this make sense. They're going to take flag football. We're going to take lacrosse, and 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 so that that's led to an influx of members. And then you know, men's volleyball. I mean, we're arguably the the best men's volleyball conference in the country, one of the two best. Um, you know, and 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 so our men's volleyball, uh, is, Corey Westry will tell you, G Pack schools coming down there just because of Jamestown leaving. There's there's just not enough schools. And so we're going to have a 14 team men's volleyball league. Um, and our men's volleyball, uh, conference is legit. So, um, that's been exciting. Our associate memberships have doubled. Um, and I anticipate they'll probably continue to grow with in, in sport by sport membership. And that's exciting to us as well, because what we look at is when you're an administrator on campus, cause I've been there, as you said, like I, I understand how do we get our teams and our student athletes in a place where they're going to have a great experience. Um, I think some of this coming over is, is there's some confidence towards us in the heart that we're going to provide a great experience. And we take that very seriously. What is, uh, and I, and I appreciate your time commissioner. Thank you very much. I, I wanted to, to ask you something. I have asked this of, of, uh, previous commissioners here during this week. What, what is something that, that you do that, you know, people may not think a conference commissioner would do, whether it be part of your job or whether it be something in your personal life? What's what's something that's unique to what you do? Yeah, that's a really good question. I, I mean, I think uh, I think there's a there's an understanding that the conference commissioner has a hand in the business operations of the conference. Um, I think that what I didn't necessarily have as much of appreciation in is you know, literally the conference commissioner is the CEO, the CFO, um, the chief information or chief technology officer when it comes to things like when I was on a campus, I called someone, right? Like, hey, you know, what's this look like? Where's this, you know, when when do we pay this? And or whatever that may be. Um, <laughs> I'm doing all that, right? 
uh, and I'm fortunate to have Tyler Price who handles the communications work and um, he's going to have some sport oversight. So, you know, I just think that was the part that uh, I knew existed, but, um, and other commissioners are watching right now, if, if they will, you know, are going to tune into this at some point, like Corey, and I know you've talked with him, he'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just, it's crazy. I mean, you, you, you're running the whole entire business. And what part of that I like about it, it's somewhat entrepreneurial in a sense is that, you know, you get identified a pr a priorities with the money that comes in and comes out and such of working with your COP and everything. So I think that's one thing that people probably didn't know is that literally everything comes through it. I mean, we, we work, we, we have someone help us with doing taxes at the end of the year, but I mean, paying payroll taxes, everything. And so I think that was just something that I didn't totally realize that uh, has been a learning curve, but has actually been kind of enjoyable and new. Well, I want to give you the opportunity to, to wrap things up and to give a commercial, if you will, to future student athletes, maybe even current student athletes, parents, or whoever may be watching right now, why should someone come and participate in one of the member institutions and be a part of the heart of America conference? Yeah. In the world of college athletics, where you see consolidation, you see um, in some cases, you know, uh, things getting smaller in certain aspects are not growing. Um, we are growing. Um, we're growing. Uh, we're in, a, in an environment of high education, where, higher education, where things are, um, uh, at times scary, um, we're very stable, um, not only stable, but, but evolving. And so our, our member institutions are all in, um, we have a, a really exciting plan for, uh, making our conference a very big time feel where you're at, whether it comes to championships or just how we operate from a business standpoint. Um, I, I think we're going to look to, and we're going to look at what are the best small college conferences in the country? And we're going to look at all different levels. And, and we want a, the heart of America to be in that conversation every single day. So you're going to see a marketing push. You're going to see a digital push online with social media. You're going to see just a you know championship enhancement um, push and, and and everything to benefit our student athletes. And so, you know, if, if whether you're a coach looking to come to the heart or a student athlete, obviously that's the most important coming to the heart. Um, you're not only going to have a good experience on your campus because our member institutions are bought in, um, but you're going to have a great experience within co in the conference and it's going to feel really big time. And, and that's something that we're going to focus on every single thing that we do um, is making a big time where we're at. So uh, there, there's, there's no risk um, in, in having a high level experience coming over this direction because, because we're going to deliver. And, and, and that's just something we're really, really passionate about right now. All right. That, that, that's fantastic. Commissioner Nick Rule in his first season, first, well, heading for your second season next week, but uh, first, first full year uh, in the 24, 25 season coming up, but uh, the new commissioner for the heart of America conference. And I appreciate your work, sir. Also, I appreciate the fact that uh, you've taken some time with us here today on Midwest sports net during commissioner's week. Thank you again. And as always, we're going to follow the heart conference this year. Yeah, I appreciate the work you guys do. You, you provide a platform um, for uh, probably one of the most important levels as far as small college athletics in general, NAI Division II and all that. But NAI, I think, as you look in the next 10 years, is going to be the, more, the most important place for uh, the, tr the real approach to college athletics going forward and, and just what that intentionality looks like in a world that's changing so much. And so we appreciate you giving the platform and, and uh, really thank you for having us on.